May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God, and we would like to share our reflections on these Bible readings. We hope that it is useful for preparing our hearts to receive the Eucharist. Tuesday of the Third Week of Advent A reading from the Book of Judges There was a certain man from Zorah, of the clan of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren and had borne no children. An angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Though you are barren and have had no children, yet you will conceive and bear a son. Now then, be careful to take no wine or strong drink, and to eat nothing unclean. As for the son you will conceive and bear, no razor shall touch his head, for this boy is to be consecrated to God from the womb. It is he who will begin the deliverance of Israel from the power of the Philistines. The woman went and told her husband, A man of God came to me. He had the appearance of an angel of God, terrible indeed. I did not ask him where he came from, nor did he tell me his name. But he said to me, You will be with child and will bear a son. So take neither wine nor strong drink, and eat nothing unclean. For the boy shall be consecrated to God from the womb until the day of his death. The woman bore a son and named him Samson. The boy grew up, and the Lord blessed him. The Spirit of the Lord stirred him. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb you are my strength. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. I will treat of the mighty works of the Lord. O God, I will tell of your singular justice. O God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Abijah. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Once when he was serving as priest in his division's turn before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right of the altar of incense, Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers toward children and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? 
For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel said to him in reply, I am Gabriel, who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you this good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to talk until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was gesturing to them, but remained mute. Then, when his days of ministry were completed, he went home. After this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. In the Bible, there are a number of incidences where elderly women who had never borne a child, through the intervention of God, are blessed with a child, usually a son. In Judges chapter 13 verses 2 to 7, 24 to 25 recounts one of these, that is the birth of Samson. What is special to all these stories is that the child to be born is given a very special role by God. It is as if to say that God had played a role with the mother in the birth of this child. He was, in a way, God's child. And that is what we also see in Luke chapter 1 verses 5 to 25 which speaks about the circumstances in which the elderly Elizabeth is blessed with a son who will be John the Baptist. Judges were really heroic figures from various Israelite tribes who were engaged in the struggle of the Israelites to establish their dominion over the land, which they believed had been allotted to them by God. Not surprisingly, the present occupants of the territories were not too pleased and resisted strongly, with varying degrees of success and failure on both sides. Samson Overall, he is presented as being physically very strong, but in other respects very weak, particularly where women were concerned. And it was a woman, the notorious Delilah, who would bring about his downfall. Nor, in spite of some successes, did he ever manage to free his country from the Philistine enemy. His exploits were more concerned with himself than with his people. The Philistines were a non-Semitic people. They settled on the coastal plain of Palestine about the same time as the Hebrews were entering the land from the east. Conflict between them was inevitable. The misdeeds of the Israelites are often pictured by the prophets in the light of their foolish pursuit of foreign women. During the judges' period, the people constantly prostituted themselves in worshiping Canaanite gods. Samson was from the tribe of Dan. His mother shares this fate with some other prominent women in the Old Testament, Sarah, the mother of Isaac, Rebekah, the mother of Jacob, Hannah, the mother of the prophet Samuel, and, of course, Elizabeth the mother of John the Baptist. Samson's mother is to prepare for his birth by not taking wine, or any food regarded as unclean. As a future liberator of his people, this son will be especially dedicated to the Lord. From his very conception, he is to be regarded as a Nazarite. The word Nazir in Hebrew means consecrated. A Nazarite was obliged to abstain from drinking wine or having his hair cut. In early times, the Nazarite vow was for life, but in later times it could be temporary, and its termination would be signified by the cutting of one's hair. It is implied that Samson's uncut hair is the source of his great strength, which is lost when it is cut by the treacherous Delilah. When the child is born, his mother names him Samson, a word which means sun or brightness. This could be an expression of joy over the birth of an unexpected child or refer to a nearby town, Beth Shemesh, house of the sun, God. The boy grew and the Lord blessed him, Judges chapter 13 verse 24. This final remark refers to his future feats of strength. Compare this with the words about Jesus after he had returned to Nazareth following his presentation in the temple by Mary and Joseph. And Jesus increased in wisdom 
and in years, and in divine and human favor, Luke chapter 2 verse 52. Yet, like John the Baptist, each of us has been called to be a forerunner of Jesus, to prepare the way for Jesus to come into other people's lives, especially those who have not yet had the experience of knowing him. Advent is a time to renew our hope and confidence in God's faithfulness to the covenant he made with his people. In preparing the way for a savior, we see the wondrous miracle of two barren couples who conceive and bear son Samson in the Old Testament, Judges chapter 13, and John the Baptist in the New Testament, Luke chapter 1 verse 5. They are called by God to bring hope and deliverance at a time of spiritual darkness and difficulty for the people of God. God's angelic messenger greeted Zechariah with a blessing beyond his expectations. Your prayer is heard. You will have a son, and his mission will be great for all of Israel. Luke chapter 1 verse 13. Until the day the infant was dedicated to the Lord and given the name John. When God draws us into his presence, he wants us to be still and quiet before him so we can listen to his voice as he speaks to our hearts and reveals his mind to us. In the Annunciation of the birth of John the Baptist, the angel explains to Zechariah the role his son is to play in preparing the way for the Messiah. John will be great in the sight of God. He will live as a Nazarite. See Numbers chapter 6, a person set apart for the Lord. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even within his mother's womb. And he shall be sent to the people of God in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers and children to God and one another by turning the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. The name John means the Lord is gracious. When God acts to save us, he graciously fills us with his Holy Spirit and makes our faith alive to his promises. Lord Jesus, you bring hope and restoration to your people. Restore and strengthen Christian family life today. Help me to love and serve my family. May your love rule in all my relationships and remove any barriers to peace and harmony. Amen.